Hello, this is Amit from Digital Inspiration and this is a demo of email notifications. It is a new add-on for Google Forms that helps you send email notifications when, whenever somebody submits a Google Form. Now, there are two kinds of email notifications. One is uh, you send notifications to yourself. So when somebody submits a form, you get an email with all the data that they have submitted in an email message. Then the other kind of notification is any notification goes out to the respondent. So whenever somebody submits a form, they get an email kind of an acknowledgement saying that you have received their form submission. There is a third category of notifications that this add-on supports and those are called rule-based notifications. So for instance, if you're a school, you can set up a rule where all form submissions related to students of a particular grade are automatically routed to the teacher who is managing that grade. You can set up simple or complex notifications and automatically forward the form data to the right person based on rules. So now that you know the capabilities of this add-on, let's get started and install this in our Google Forms. So the first thing you need to do is go to this link labnol.org slash forms and install the add-on. So here's a sample Google Form that we are using for this demo. It's a simple form asking for the customer's name, their email address, the product for which they require support, the telephone number and also a description of the problem. So our Google Form is now ready and we need to apply notification rules. So for that, I'll switch to the Google Forms editor and go to the add-ons menu. Now inside the add-ons menu, I'll choose email notifications for forms and create a new rule. A little configuration window pops up and this is where we will configure our email notifications. So the first thing it asks for is your sender's name and this is important because it will show up in your outgoing email messages. The header of outgoing email messages will show up this name. Then it requires your email address. Now if you have just one email address that's okay you can skip this otherwise some people have multiple email addresses and they're connected to your gmail account using aliases. Now in that case you can select any of your gmail allies from this drop down and so send notifications on behalf of another email address. The next question requires you to enter the email address of the person who should receive these notifications. Now by default is your email address but you can put addresses of multiple people separated by comma and they will all receive the form notification whenever a new form is submitted. Similarly if you want to send a notification to the form submitter saying that you have received their form you can check this option notify form submitter. When you do this you also need to select the form field where you are asking the form submitter for their email address. We will skip the pdf option for now and click continue. The next section is interesting because here you get to customize the content of the email that goes out. Now emails have uh, fixed uh, subjects like uh, somebody has submitted a form or a new response has been received. But with the forms add-on what you can do is you can personalize the subject line and include any of the form fields in the subject. So for instance in our sample form we have a name field. So what we can do is we can select name from the drop down and include it in the subject line. So our subject line will look like inside double brackets name has submitted a form. When this email notification goes out, this variable name will be replaced with the actual value that the user has input in the form. Now let's focus our attention on the email body. For email body, we have a special variable called all answers and what it does is it adds the entire form data in a tabular format in the email body. So if you want to include every single field that's in the form in the email notification, just put all answers anywhere in the email body. Sometimes you could be managing multiple forms and it's very difficult to figure out which form has sent a particular email notification. To take care of this problem, what we can do is we can include the form name itself in the email body. And how do you do that? Uh, yes, you guessed it right. We just include the form name variable anywhere in the email body. And this is substituted with the actual form when our email goes out. So to keep things simple, we will not add any more fields and we will also skip the conditions section and create a new rule now. So our basic notification rules are now ready. We are emailing the form data to one or more people. We are sending an email notification to the form respondent. But now let's set up a rule based notification.
So we'll quickly set up the sender's name, their email address and in the recipient's email field, we'll put the email address of the team that is handling product support for a particular product. So what happens is when somebody selects iPhone from the product in the form, an email goes out to the iPhone team. In the next page, we will include uh, some variables in the email subject line. So it's easy for the uh, team to recognize what this email is about by just looking at the subject line. For the email body, we may not be interested in including every single field, uh, just the relevant ones. So probably we'll include the product name, the, the issue that the customer has faced and also their phone number where the team can reach them for support. Now that our email body is ready, I'll show you one interesting trick. You can actually use any of the HTML tags to uh, format your email. So for instance, if you want to put something in bold, you can just enclose that inside the B tags. Similarly, if you want to put something in italics, you just use the EM tags. Coming to the last section, we will set up a condition now because we are setting up a rule based notification. So for this form, what condition we will impose is that whenever a user selects iPhone from the product list, all these queries will be routed to the iPhone support team. So for this, we will select the field as product from the drop down and then we will set the condition as equals iPhone. If you know regular expressions, you can set up even more complex matching rules, but we'll probably reserve that for a later video. Now we are all set, so we'll click the create rule button to activate this rule. Everything looks good now, so I'll open the Google form and submit a test entry. The form has been successfully submitted, so the email notifications should have gone out. How do we test that? Um, I'll go to my Gmail inbox and look into the sent items folder. Now this email is the self notification where we were requesting all the data in a table of format. And if I look into the other email message, this is the rule based notification that has gone out. So if you remember, we had uh, formatted this email using HTML tags and all those tags are preserved. So some things are bold, some things are in italics. So your form notifications are working and you're good to go, but I'd like to show you one more thing. So if I go to the forms editor again and under the add on section email notifications, you see there is an option to manage rules. Now this is where you go and edit your previously created rules. So I open one of the existing rules. Now, remember I was talking about formatting your email notifications using HTML tags. I'll show you an easier way to do that. So you go to this website controlq.org slash HTML mail and this is a Visivig editor where you can format the email body to your heart's content. So you can change the text size, change the font color, you can include images or you can even include your brand's logo in the email notifications. After you're done formatting the email body, just click the view source icon and it will show you the generated HTML. All you have to do is copy this HTML and paste it in the form notifications add-on. I'm sure you'll find form notifications useful, so go to labnol.org slash forms to install it now. And if you need support or if you have any questions, just head over to these links. Thank you.